Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. You are listening to the Brilliance Business Show. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. Conversations with leading experts in business. And today I have a wonderful guest, Dr. Karen Perkins, a KPI authority. And our topic today is how thoughts become things. Karen, welcome to the Brilliance Business Show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm really looking forward to a conversation with you, Dr. Karen, learning more about you, your business and the wonderful film, How Thoughts Become Things. Before I get started, I just need to make a legal disclaimer that Karen is not offering legal advice or legal assistance. So let's get started with the show. Dr. Kay, would you share with our listeners a little bit about yourself, your business and what you do? Yes, and I'm not giving medical advice today either, uh, though I will talk a little bit about how thoughts change our physical and mental being. Uh, I am Dr. Karen Perkins. Please, everyone, call me Karen. My students love to call me Dr. K. I am a leading KPI authority, which is Key Performance Index. And I use that with my consulting with large corporations, with individuals, um, with small businesses. And what KPI is, the Key Performance Index, is what helps you actually accomplish the most and that gives you the most benefit in your own personal life. I am currently running a um, course and, well, really a whole movement on living first class, which is finding out what is truly important to you, not just what everybody told you should be important, and then aligning your goals, aligning your work, aligning your thoughts with that, and then achieving that itself directly, getting the actual path that you want. And first class means something different to everyone. Some it is sitting in the front of the airplane. Some it's having more time to spend with your loved ones. Some it's doing charity work. I mean, you can see it varies. And I do coaching, I do consulting, and I do public speaking. I'm also a certified hypnotherapist, an expert in cold reading and body language, and spent many, many years studying human behavior. And that, you know, leads us to how thoughts become things, because every minute of every day, your body is physically reacting, literally changing in response to the thoughts that run through your mind. And Mark, I know you understand that because you've been working with that and you've been working with other thought leaders that uh, know that that is true as well. I am a big, big, firm, firm believer in the power of the mind. I've used it in my own life to create bad things and to create good things. I've had good mindset, bad mindset, and I always say I know which one I prefer. And I just know how important it is to watch the thoughts that you're putting into your mind. So we can come back to this a little bit later. I want to go back to your past a little bit, Dr. K. And ask what has brought you to serve the world helping them to transform their lives what was those challenges you faced back in your past that has taken you onto your self-development journey well many many things i grew up in an entrepreneur family that was 
huge in um, positive affirmations. Uh, the required reading in our house was um, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. And I think I read it, oh, 12, 15 times before I graduated high school. Uh, but it wasn't until I was older and I reread it that I went, oh. And then I had some experiences that were not experiences I wished to have. And, you know, I, I lost someone very, very near and dear to me who was extremely positive. And at that point in my life, I had allowed myself to become negative. And it just kind of slapped me upside the head. And then a few months later, as I'm teaching positivity, um, and not in a good mood as I was teaching it that day, I had uh, someone at the conference center run in and say, hey, Karen, you know, we've got an emergency call for you. And I'm so ashamed because my first thought was, someone better be dead or dying or I'm going to kill them because they interrupted me while I was speaking. <laughs> and I, it, I was awful. But what made it worse is when I finally got on the phone call. I'll never forget that moment because the clock stopped. I could smell everything in the room, and there was no sound. Once they said, Karen, your son is being rushed to ER. He attempted suicide. And dear, dear. I realized it was time for me to be more aware. And as he and I worked through that, and there's a lot of great stories there and a lot of not so great stories there, but as we worked through it, it came down to thoughts and gratitude. And so I challenged him and I did it with him every day, say 10 things we're grateful for, and then think about that thing for a full minute. And when we both did it, it started out as bodily functions because we couldn't think of things to be grateful for. Uh, you know, I'm grateful I can hear. And all the things that I can do because I can hear, I would think about for a minute. And, you know, in a matter of a couple of weeks, life changed. And, you know, it's, it's amazing because when we have a thought, our cells are literally bombarding with peptides, and these neuropeptides actually make your cells grow, and they'll divide. And as they divide, the new cell is focused solely on that thought. So if your thoughts are negative, you now have cells running through your body, literal cells, that are only negative cells. And, you know... You can do it also, though, with good. If you focus on the good, the cells will divide and be good. And the, the beauty, though, is is that, um, well, we, we reproduce these cells every two months. So basically, we replace them constantly. So, you know, if you've been bombarding yourself with negative, you've got definitely the ability to change that around to the positive. You just have to allow yourself those daily affirmations that are positive and ones that are sincere and add to them as you go. And that's what I've done. That's what my son has done. And at that moment, when I got to the hospital and looked at him, I knew I didn't want anyone else to think and feel the way he thought and feel, felt that led him to that point. And... My kids were grown at the point, and I said, I'm already speaking, I'm already coaching and consulting, and I'm good at the things I do. A lot of it was scientific-based and technically-based, and I said, I need to become emotional intelligent expert as well and have it based on that, because that controls everything else. And I have spent the last 20 years doing that. And my life is better. My family's life is better. And if I only change one person's ability to change their thoughts at a time, then, you know, 
I'm blessed because I've been part of changing the world. And I just want people to know they're not alone, that they're loved, and that they have at their fingertips everything they need to be blissfully happy every day and still achieve the physical goals that they may have set for themselves. Dr. K, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's really given me an insight of your past, why you do what you do. I totally agree with you that your mind controls your outcomes. Now, recently here in the UK, we have had a really big, well-known celebrity on television commit suicide and due to circumstances that should have never have got to that state where someone needs to feel the need to change uh, to take their own life there's support out there there's people that can help you like dr k to control your thoughts in your mind everything starts with a thought now Getting back to a more upbeat, I want to just touch on what you said about Think and Grow Reach, Dr. Karen. I'm just thinking in my head, I bet you haven't read Think and Grow Reach as many times as Bob Proctor. <laughs> I probably have. <laughs> I, I, I try and go through it at least once a year. So. <laughs> so my next question where I would like to go, Dr. Karen, is can you tell us what kind of clients on a general basis that you normally serve? That is a great question. It depends upon what I'm doing, um, which clients I'm serving. I am one of the top five organizational change managers in the U.S., and they tell me one of the top 1% in the, um, the world. And when you're doing change management, you work with an entire company, helping them feel good about the fact that their whole life is going to suck for a year or two. Um, and it's all based on thoughts, but also on what they do to lead them to success. Um, I do a lot of consulting with executives, um, personal consulting and business consulting. Um, I have a great book. It's a bestseller called Emotional Power, which actually goes over the logic behind emotions and the emotions behind logic, because you cannot have one without the other. And as you were saying, the thoughts create emotions. But really what happens is when you have a thought, it flows through the amygdala, a little itty place in your brain, and that amygdala assigns it its physical reaction and thoughts, or excuse me, its emotions. And so these corporate men, they're now all of a sudden given permission to, re well, to react to their thoughts and to change them, depending upon if it's helping them or not, and to fully feel their emotions it's okay have emotions. And it's not just the men, it's the women. But I also work one-on-one -on -one with individuals, um, entrepreneurs. Uh, I have some housewives. But anyone who has achieved a certain level of success and one day woke up and looked around and said, is this it? I, it really? I, I had hoped for so much more um, at this point in my life. And I help them realign what really is important so that they don't wake up that way. And so, you know, that's, I'm not saying everyone's my client because they're not. But if I'm doing the change management, it would be large corporations and everyone within it. And if it's my coaching, it's um, executives and individuals um, that are really at a, ready, a point to change their life because they want more. Great. And could you just share the link where people could get a copy of your book, Dr. K? 
Well, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> it's on Amazon, um, and they can go, I believe it is in my shopping cart, they can go to um, Dr. Dr. Perkins, P E R K I N S dot com, and that will take them to my site. And if it's not in my shopping cart, I will talk to my IT guy today and make sure it is. <laughs> it's also, yeah, it's also in my my home study box set on living first class. Um, it's in there in hard copy, which you cannot get anywhere else. And the audio book is in there, which right now you cannot get anywhere else. Um, so, you know, it's multiple places, but you go to Amazon and Amazon does their thing. And sometimes you can really get it at a very, very low price. And sometimes it's full price. It kind of depends upon the day. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with us, Dr. Karen. Now, I'm coming on to what I'm really excited to talk about. You are featuring in the new movie, How Thoughts Become Things, by Douglas Vermeeren, who is an incredible, credible guy who I watched the Opus movie recently, which I'm also a big fan of. So can you tell us a little bit about how thoughts become things and your role in the movie? What are you sharing? I share the outcomes of thoughts becoming things as well as how to change your thoughts to get the outcomes you want. Uh, you know, one of my quotes I'm known for is what you believe is true is true for you, even if it's not based on reality. And, you know, you think it enough, you're going to believe it. And if you believe it, you're going to react and do things that reinforce that that is true. And we do that. We, we reinforce what our thoughts are. And it is something that we are physically, chemically, emotionally well, geared to do. We, that's how we're set up. And so I, if I believe something's going to happen, I can make it happen. In fact, there were studies done that showed that thoughts could control right down to machinery. And it was as odd as you can imagine, but for over 30 years, many of the scientific institutions around the world have studied thoughts and have found miraculous things about it. And, you know, these thoughts, the placebo effect, you know, they've had surgeries without anesthesia or without painkillers pain um, because they didn't have them, but they gave the people who were having the surgery something that the person thought was a painkiller, and it killed the pain. And, you know, it's that placebo effect, and we all have it, be it negative or positive. And, you know, that's, again, why I say what you believe is true is true for you. And, you know, your thoughts go way down into your deep subconscious. Experiences you have go down there, and they kind of mingle, and then they want to make it true what you, you have created down there. And like I said, these these peptides, these cells, they replace themselves every two months. But what's in your deep subconscious will stay until you consciously allow yourself to go into the subconscious and choose what you want. If you're having the outcome in life you want, then you're thinking the right way and you are drawing on the things and you have refocused on the things that are there in the, the deep subconscious. If things aren't turning out well, ask yourself, what am I doing? What am I thinking that is creating this? And there are a lot of outside influences. I understand that. But it was Victor Frankl. Now, his big thing was they can control everything except for my thoughts. And when he was being tortured in the... Uh, 
the, the camps, the Nazi camps, and he saw people literally dying from giving up, not from the hideous tortures, though they did from that too, but just dying from giving up, he realized, they can take away my freedom, they can physically harm me, they can make me bleed, but they cannot control my thoughts and my attitude. And a lot of us, me included, and recently, sadly, um, and, you know, we're learning every day and we slip back into old habits sometimes, but we allow external events to kind of knock us off our, our game. And then we think, oh, my gosh, this is the way it's always going to be. And then we make it true. And it's just, it's sad if it's not positive And it's phenomenal if it is positive. And you just have to, to open your mind up. A, a fun story, and I know I'm talking a lot, but a fun story is I have a friend that always parks in the front of the parking lot at the stores. And, you know, for years, I was the one that was way out in no man's land and had to walk 10 miles, okay, that's exaggerating, um, to get to the store doors. But she always was within the first three stalls. And she would chant, I have a parking space right up front. And we'd all make fun of her, but she did. And so she challenged me, oh gosh, it's been 20, oh wow, I am getting old. It's been 20 <laughs> years ago, she challenged me to say, I have a parking space. And at first I was negative and, you know, sarcastic, I've got a parking and nothing happened. But then I started saying it and, and pretending I believed it. And then I did start believing it. And I will drive around the parking lot once, you know, I'll go in, it's not there. I'll go around one time after that. And honest to goodness, 95 to 98% of the time, I get a parking spot right up front. And it comes from believing it, which has dual things. One, it's not that people in the store say, oh, Karen's here, I've got to run and leave, so she has this place. It's that I don't give up and just naturally park where I would assume I'm going to have to because I believed there wouldn't be one. And people leave at the front of the parking lot as often as one in the back do. <laughs> people are coming in and out of the store all the time. <laughs> and when I, when I do that, my kids do it now too, I, I see that parking space. It might not be on the row I was looking, but I will see it out of the corner of my eye, and there it is because I'm focused on it consciously, subconsciously, and my thoughts will lead me to it. And, you know, that's kind of a silly example, but I'll tell you what, it's that simple. Karen, I agree with everything what you have said. The power of intention is so, so important. And talking about quantum physics as well, I mean, quite a few years ago, people would say, oh, this is a load of rubbish. This isn't true. But more and more and more science is proving so, so many things to do with the mind, to do with thoughts, to do with the quantum field. And it's proven that everything is connected by a field of energy we are all entangled so everything what you're saying to me resonates and also what did stand out to me was how the cells renew themselves now I may be wrong on time here but I heard it was something like seven years you have literally got a whole new body <laughs> I don't know if I've got oh, that yeah. timing right but I think it's around seven years and you literally have created a whole new body so you want to be putting good thoughts into those cells because everything is connected the mind the body the spirit we're connected to other people's circumstances i just love everything what this movie stands for so i would like to ask you next in your words 
how to thoughts. Now, I want you to sum it up in a few sentences. How do how do thoughts become things? Thoughts are an energy it's out to the world, and it attracts to us what we're thinking about. Uh, because energy will attract like energy, and energy can be felt everywhere. And if you are thinking you need something, people literally all the way across the world will say, you know, I feel in need to call Karen today, and they'll call me. And that is because the energy has flown or ridden the waves or however you want to say it got there. But the energy waves have reached them, and they will call and answer my my prayer, my request, whatever it is you want to call it. But thoughts are energy, and energy is the base for is the one law of the universe. And thoughts control us. They control the things around us, and they control how others react to us which also controls the kind of things that happen to us. Beautifully said, Dr. K. Now, I would like to ask you to summarise, why should people come to a screening or at least watch this movie? This is the, the word how is the only action word of the questions they tell you to ask. So who, what, why, where, how. How is the only action word. And to this point, we have learned everything but the actual actions. And anyone, if your life is phenomenal and you want to keep it that way, this is going to be the truth to help you. If you want a few things to be better, This is the truth that will give you the path to do that. If your life is in disarray or there's some unhappiness or extreme unhappiness, this is going to give you the hope, it's going to give you the path, and it's going to give you the actual actions to take to achieve the things you want. And my my coach, which everyone should have a coach, says, and this is a little crass, can I say something crass on your show? You certainly can, Dr. K. He says you should wake up every morning feeling like you've just had the best sex of your life. (laughs) And we wake up that day based on how we feel and think our day is going to be and how our days have been in the recent past. And this is going to help people feel that way when they wake up in the morning. Well, if it's going to make me feel that way, I'm coming to all the screenings and watching the movie, (laughs) downloading it, buying my friends copies. (laughs) No, there you go. (laughs) Karen, I just love your energy. I love what you're about. I love your topic, what you speak about. Can you share with our listeners what is new for Dr. Karen? What are you working on right now? I'm I'm really focused on the movie and on living first class, on helping people. Um, I have a, a trick, so to speak, to help them determine their true core value. Uh, because if you ask someone what they are, no. Oh, 97, 97 and a half percent of the time, they're not honest. They think they are, but when they do this activity, they find out their true core value. And once they know that, now we can align their goals in their life with that so they achieve their own personal ultimate success. And I'm, I'm really focused on that right now and, you know, living first class. And people can also go to livingfirstclass.today um to to get more information on that i have really enjoyed dr perkins 
You say that again because I interrupted you. Just say that once more. Oh, for no problem. Listeners. I apologize. I, they can also go to the DR Perkins to get the same information. The, the links will, will pull you together. But That's absolutely amazing, Dr. Karen. Dr. Karen Perkins, a KPI authority. Our topic has been amazing today, how thoughts become things. Before I close the show today, I would like to ask you, Dr. K, is there anything I did not cover that you would like to share? Any last few words of wisdom for our listeners? Yes. Everyone, no matter how deep and dark and in despair and how black it may feel around you have hope and they have to start with saying I have hope and there are people who want to support me and help me and if that's the only thing they say and they come up with 10 things a day that they're grateful for and spend one minute thinking about it even if it starts with bodily functions, then there is hope and they will begin that two-month cycle of replacing their cells, which will give them what they need so that they too can pull themselves out of that state and be happy and find the things in their lives that give them blessings and the courage and the joy that they deserve and everyone deserves to have that. Great, great words, Dr. Karen. And I would like to add to that a little bit as well, starting with bodily functions, but also look up at the sky a little bit more. I love taking my dog a walk on an evening, looking up at the stars, looking up at the sun, the moon, we are on a big rock flying through space. What an incredible universe we live in. And I think people should look up more often and really appreciate the gift of life. Get out of negative thinking. Get into living from the heart, living from good intentions and being there for each other. And look up at the sky because people are too too in their heads thinking about problems when we are in such an incredible present moment. Now, Karen, before we leave, I would like to ask you just once more, how can people connect with you? How can people follow you? Um, they can go to um, dr-perkins.com or a way that they can actually get links to all of my social media is DRK, Dr. K. So DRK360 is in full circle. So DRK, dot, or excuse me, DRK360.com. And that will take them basically to my business card, um, which leads them to all kinds of things. Um, all my social media, some videos, and other things. So drk360.com. And, Mark, I know we're short on time and we've gone over, but I want to add you just made me realize something, and thank you for that. We do live on a rock that is in, going in the universe. On, we're in a magical thing. You know, the fact that we're on that rock that is spinning and flying through the universe is a miracle. And yes. we are surrounded and live on and are part of that miracle. So all of us are in that miraculous environment. And you just, what you said, just hit me really hard that that's the truth. So thank you for that comment. You are so welcome. I'd like to add a little bit more now that you have brought it back up as well. The iron in our blood was made deep inside of a star. And this is true. So we are made of stars. We are 
the universe. Dr. K, I have really enjoyed having a conversation with you today. I'm looking forward to seeing the movie very soon. I'm looking forward to staying in touch with you. Thank you so much for being on the Brilliance Business Show. Thank you so much for, for having me on the show. It's been a delight. You are a brilliant individual. Thank you. You have a great day. You have been listening to the Brilliance Business Show. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. Conversations with leading experts in business. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.